Hi everybody, welcome back to the Keeper Corner Series of Lincoln Children's Zoo. My name is Jake, I'm one of the giraffe keepers here at the zoo, and of course we are in here with our giraffe today. Now in past videos we've talked about some of their enrichment, some of their training, the kinds of foods they like to eat, but today I'm going to go over kind of some of their anatomy, so what their bodies are, um, some of the interesting facts about their bodies and how they work and all that stuff. Um, so I think I'm going to start off with their neck, which is one of their most noticeable features. Obviously that neck is really, really long. It makes them the tallest land animal in the world. Now one interesting fact about their necks is they actually have the same number of bones in their neck as we do, which is seven. So pretty much every mammal on earth has the same number of bones in their neck, um, from the smallest mouse all the way up to the tallest giraffe, which is seven. Um, now of course their bones are just much, much bigger than ours. Their neck bones, or their cervical vertebrae, um, can be up to a foot long, which is absolutely huge. That's what gives them um, such um, amazing height to their bodies. Now on top of that neck, just like us, they have their brain, and their brain is really important, functions for all their body, um, and their brain needs lots of blood to keep it um, going and operating. Now with their brain so up high, they need a lot of blood pressure to help get blood all the way up to that brain, so they have an incredibly large and powerful heart inside their body as well. Now the largest giraffe hearts can get up to 26 pounds and be up to two feet long, which is absolutely massive. And they're so strong and their muscles are so developed that they can um, get upwards to three inches thick, which is really, really huge. But like I said, they need it to get that blood all the way to the top of their head with immense blood pressure. Um, they also have special valves inside the veins in their neck to help their blood from um, flowing forward or backward based on if they lift their head up or down. That way they don't um, get a blood rush to their head if they stick their head down to drink, and that way they don't faint when they bring their head back up. Um, so they have those specialized features to make sure that um, they control the blood pressure inside their neck to keep themselves safe and secure as well. Um, now talking about their head, um, they do have those ossicones on top of their head. Those are really interesting features that um, every giraffe has. You can kind of tell a little bit um, a difference between uh, males and females based on those ossicones as well. The female ones are generally a little bit smaller and have those tufts of fur on the top of them. Uh, and the male giraffe have larger ossicones and generally as they get older, they'll become bald and kind of nubby at the top. Um, giraffe heads, or male giraffe heads, I used to say, also develop lots of calcium deposits. So as they get older, they get really bumpy and gnarly looking, and they use those for fighting with other male giraffe. Um, so looking at their ossicones and looking at their heads is a um, pretty easy way to tell, um, especially giraffe age. So the older the giraffe is, especially if it's a boy, the more bumpy and gnarly looking their head will be. Now you can see Phoebe right now, she's working on some willow brows. Um, these guys are browsers, which means they eat lots of plant material. So they have to have specialized systems and specialized tools to help them um, eat and digest that material. Um, one of their um, specialized tools is their teeth. Um, so I have some teeth right here that have fallen out. These guys are still young, so they still have some of their baby teeth. Let me get it turned right here. So that little one is one of their incisors. You and I have incisors and molars, just like this one over here. Um, obviously their teeth are much bigger than ours. But they use our, their incisors just like us at the front of their mouth to help them bite onto things. And then they use the molars in the back to help them grind down all those leaves. So you and I, like I said, have molars as well. Ours are mostly used for mashing food together, but their molars are designed for grinding. So if you watch them chewing, you'll see them chewing in kind of a circular motion. So they position those leaves and sticks and barks that they like to eat between those molars and kind of grind it down into this um, mush, which then they eat, and it helps them to digest it a lot easier. Now also to help them digest, they do have four stomachs. They are ruminants. So they have those four stomachs that help them digest plant material um, because plant material can be pretty tough to break down. So they have to go through a long process to get all the nutrients and water out of it. So they do have those four stomachs inside the body to help them break down all this food. Um, now a lot of people ask when they come to the zoo, um, they see their poop on the ground and think, man, that looks kind of tiny for such a big animal. And that is pretty true. Um, that just means these guys are really, really efficient at getting all the nutrients, especially water, out of their food. So in the wild, giraffes are living in grasslands and semi-arid spaces where um, water is maybe not always available on the surface, but there's usually plenty of water locked away in the leaves, just like this willow here. Um, so as the food is being digested, they're doing a really great job of squeezing every drop of water out of that food. Um, to he help keep them hydrated. Um, that's why their droppings are pretty small and actually pretty dry as well. 
Um, so that just means that they can get a lot of their water from their food and don't necessarily have to drink it straight from the ground, which can kind of put them in an awkward position if you've ever seen a giraffe drinking as well. Um, let's see. Oh, another thing about their blood circulation, um, if you look closely at their legs, their legs, um, for being such a big animal, they're kind of um, thinner than maybe most people would expect. Um, their skin on their legs is very, very thick, but it's also wrapped very, very tightly around those bones. And that helps keep blood from pooling down there. Um, blood works just like works with gravity, um, and it tends to want to flow downwards down to the ground. So to keep the blood from pooling in their legs and helping it circulate throughout their body, they have really, really tightly wrapped skin around their legs um, to help keep that blood flowing as it should be. Now at the very bottom of their feet are those big hooves. The large giraffe hooves can be about a foot across and several inches thick. Um, if you think of their hooves like our fingernails, they're essentially made of the same thing. Um, they are just standing really on the very tip of their toes, so on their tippy toes, kind of like a ballerina. Um, and to help protect their feet from standing on the tips like that, they've developed these really, really large and strong hooves. And those hooves um, are really important for helping them um, keep their body in balance and um, keeping their legs um, secure and safe underneath them as well. Um, so we do a lot of hoof work here with our giraffe and keeping them shaped nicely and clean um, just to make sure that they stay nice and healthy as well. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to my Keeper Corner here with the giraffe here at the Lincoln Children's Zoo. Don't forget about that activity down in the comments, and we can't wait to see you again when the zoo reopens. See you guys.